How is everybody doing? Stacy got to see Bon Jovi on Facebook and now Carly. <laughs> bon Jovi have a concert on Facebook? I need to watch that. Let's see. So, I hope everybody is having a great Friday and that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday and you are now in your comatose recovery phase from eating so much. <laughs> Um, I hope everyone had a very safe holiday. I know it was very different for us. It was very small, but it was still a time to come together and be thankful. And that's, that's what we did. And so I hope everyone else had a great Thanksgiving too. And just want to tell everybody hi. Hi, Delia. Hi, Kristen and Shauna and Gonzalez56 and Natasha. And Marie, and T. Scrap, and Lee from Boston. How's everybody doing tonight? Excuse me. Hi, Carol. Hi. Linda from Georgia. So, I do not have my stuff together tonight, just to warn y'all. I've not had my stuff together all week, in fact, because I took the week off of work because the kids were out of school. I was like, I'm going to get a lot of stuff done. Guess how much stuff I got done? <laughs> About maybe. Maybe I got something done, but not really. I didn't get much done at all. I was like, I'm going to make videos. I'm going to update the website. No, I just updated the Sip and, Stip home, uh, Sip and Stitch homepage today, and I usually do that on Monday. So, yeah, so this is vacation week. We just got to let that slide. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. So, quick introduction. Hi, I am Carly Bell. I love to do machine embroidery tutorials, and we like to get together every Friday night for a little something we call Sip and Stitch. So, have your beverage of choice. And um, welcome to my craft room, which is a little bit of a mess. Not too bad. I do have a new addition to my craft room I got Wednesday. I'm very excited about it. I will show y'all. Um, and tonight is really exciting because we're going to go a little bit outside of what we usually do. And not only are we going to do an embroidery project, tutorial from start to finish show you how to do it but we're also going to do a heat transfer vinyl project on my silhouette cameo which i have right here and my heat press so i know some people have been waiting for that especially brenda <laughs> so um i am excited to do with uh, this and and this is ambitious of me because i can turn a 12 minute stitch out into two hours of talking so i'm gonna try to contain myself tonight and not so <laughs> maybe not blab on too much so hi everybody I see everybody's it's like it's going so fast I can't I can't read it all but hi thank you for being here um let's see oh I see one when will you be doing a persona new hoop that's what I was supposed to do this week but uh I do have one excuse for that I had to order a part I had to order an accessory for the persona to be able to do the new hoop. So let me show you real quick. So and also I have my phone plugged in because I forgot to charge it, you know, during the day, knowing that I need full charge phone to do a tutorial tonight. So it's plugged in. So we're, we're a little bit tethered tonight, but this is my my baby the brother persona and it is a free arm machine but it is a single needle machine um so it it works kind of like the fancy multi needles but it, you still have to change the thread in between each each stage um and it does have a smaller embroidery field than the multi needle machines but Durkey came out with this new fancy giant 8 by 14 hoop so you slide it on the machine this way. It stitches out an 8 by 8 section, and then you turn it around, and it could stitch out another 8 by 8 section. So you have to split the design. So I knew I needed 
and Brilliance enthusiast to use this. But what I did not realize is that this frame is so big that it needs extra support on the machine itself. So here it is. I gotta do this one handed. Okay, so this part here is like hanging down low. And if I had even just some stabilizer on here, this would be touching the stabilizer. So it needs some support lifting it this way. So one, there's two accessories you can get. One is something that slides in right around the bobbin case and then pulls out and will hold this up here. The other is a giant table that attaches to the whole machine, but essentially that's gonna turn your machine back into a flatbed machine. So I ordered the tubular one. So it's something you have to, um, it's not available online. You have to call, I called Sewing Machines Plus and ordered it. Um, it was a little bit more expensive than I was hoping it would be, but I'm, I'm committed now to getting this frame to work in the persona. So I'm working on it. So I have to wait for that to come in. I don't even know if it's gonna come in before Christmas. So as soon as that comes in, then I'll be able to put together a tutorial on how to use that frame. Okay, so let me catch up. And also, um, for any of our new viewers tonight, I have the lovely Miss Carol, um, which hel she helps me very much with questions because as you see, I get to blabbing a lot. <laughs> Once I go, I'm, you know, I talk. Um, so if I miss your question, um, especially while when we start digging in and start working, um, she will copy your question down and when I sit down, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for questions. She's going to type back those questions in the chat and put it in all caps so I can focus because <laughs> I'm very much squirrel, you know. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's see. So, happy Thanksgiving. Hi, everybody. All right, I'm looking through the chat. Um, so, yeah, so Carol has already introduced herself in the chat and... Let's see, Bailey says, I just did my first split design on the multi-needle. Very challenging, but got it to 83,000 stitches. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, do I have a coupon code for the 8x14 hoop? No. Um, that The hoop you also have to order over the phone. I don't have a link to it. Um, and... They will work out a deal with you. So just call. Um, Andrea is my girl at Sewing Machines Plus if you want to ask for her when you call. Um, she's super nice and helpful with um, all the brother accessories that they can't sell online. You have to order them over the phone. All right. Um, Miss Scarlett, she has the free motion table. Is it the same? Yes. Um, the free motion... So that's another cool thing about the persona. If you didn't, if you are a quilter, you can turn your persona into a free motion, free motion quilter. And there's two attachments. One is that big giant table, which I just talked about. The same table comes with the free motion quit, uh, kit and then like a presser foot to press with your button. So you can hold your material on the table and then press with your button, uh, your foot pedal um, when you want it to stitch and then you move it around. Um, and I don't have a discount code for that. Um, the only things that I can get a discount code for are things that are actually on Sewing Machines Plus website that you can check out online. Then I can have an affiliate link for them and a discount code for them. So anything you find on their website that you're interested in that has an actual link and lets you check out, then send me a message and I can um, get you one of my links and a coupon code but other things you have to order on the phone. All right, so let's get started. So we're still in the Christmas, we're very much in the Christmas spirit now. Now we now we officially are allowed to be in the Christmas spirit because Thanksgiving is over. <laughs> Some people are very sketchy about that. Like we can't, no Christmas music until after Thanksgiving. Um, so we are doing dish towels. So I got these really cute set of dish towel and pot holder from Hobby Lobby. Love me some buffalo check. And I thought this would be super cute to make a um, Christmas set with. And this is also great for gifts 
um, housewarming gifts if you're going to a Christmas party, which we shouldn't be doing this year. Um, <laughs> uh, any kind of uh, things like that. If you usually have a Christmas party and you're not this year, send this to the person that would usually host it so they could have it for next year. Um, so this is the uh, towel set that I got. And this is my plan tonight. We're going to have a two for one. We're going to stitch an applique wreath on this. And I'm going to show you a trick on how you can use HTV to fill your applique space instead of material. And then when this is stitching, we're going to quickly cut out a uh, some heat transfer vinyl and heat press that on here. This one was a little tricky, especially if you have a flatbed machine. This is not something you're going to be able to stitch. I can stitch this on the Persona and I could use my fast, easy, easy frames to go inside and stick that in the machine and it could stitch, but I couldn't find a design that I liked that was that small that would work in that area, but I found a big one that I liked. Well, I can make it any size I want because it's HTV. So that's what I'm going to do on the back of here. So the other fun thing, it's Black Friday and they have so many good sales so many good sales. I um, went a little crazy with finding all the sales, which is not good for me because now I'm going to buy from all places that I told y'all had sales. But um, if you are in our Facebook group and you go to the units section of the Facebook group, all if you scroll all the way at the bottom, I have a whole unit dedicated to Black Friday and I probably have like 20 posts and each post tells you the name of the store, the, the website, and what their sale is, and then a link to it. So all of my favorite embroidery design websites have awesome sales right now. And the biggest one is Creative Fabrica. Now Creative Fabrica is a big website and they sell tons of stuff. Uh, they do have a rather large embroidery section as well, but the, the, if you have a, um, Cricut silhouette, um, scan and cut or sublimation printer, tons of stuff, tons, all kinds of fonts and graphics and SVG files. Um, so when you go pay attention to what, you know, you see something cute, you like it. When you open it, make sure it's coming in the format that you need. Um, they do have a whole embroidery section, so then you can't go wrong there and you go pick, um, you know, click embroidery and then you see everything they have that is in embroidery format. But um, tons of fonts, tons of graphics for if you have a electronic cutting machine or a sublimation printer um, to create really pretty designs. So that's the where I'm using the designs we're doing tonight and their Black Friday sale is the best out of all the ones I found because it's a dollar. Um, they have where you can go to their website and you can buy individual designs, you know, just like everybody else. But you, they also have an option where you can have a subscription to their website and pay the usual price, I think is $29 a month and have all access to everything on the site. So everything you want, you download. And whenever you, you know, feel fulfilled in everything you want, you can cancel your subscription. Um, so, but they come out with new stuff all the time. So if you are a crafter that is constantly buying designs and go and look how much you're spending on designs a month, if you're spending more than $30 a month, this might be something that's good for you. Cause then you can just go and download as much as you want. But the great deal is that tonight it's $1 for the subscription for a month. Then if you decide to keep your subscription, it's only $19 a month for the lifetime that you decide to keep the subscription. So that's a really good deal. So you can go on there now. I'm supposed to have a link in the description box, but I am failing at being together this evening. So I don't have anything yet. But if you go to the Sip and Stip homepage, I do have a link to it. And then when the live is over, I will go and fill out everything in the description box below, including a link to that. Um, but... I probably should find it now. So if anybody want to buy it now, but I'll, in a second, I'll post it in the chat. Um, so yes, $1, you can download anything, including the two designs that I'm doing tonight. Um, so that's the best 
um, Black Friday deal I've found. And then they have some other really, really awesome ones from all my favorites. So if you're not already in our Facebook group, I will put a link to the Facebook group in the description box below. And you can come join us. Make sure you answer the questions. Like, you know how when you go to join a group, some of them have like security questions. So it's just like you agreeing that you're going to be nice and, and, um, and not uh, have rude comments and stuff like that. And then I like to know what kind of machines people have. And, um, and then it says, you know, a section, make sure you read the announcements and the units because that's where all the good stuff is. So then go to the unit section. You'll see it all the way at the bottom. Okay, I see Carol has a question. One quick question from Sandra. Download fonts in wrong format. What can you do? We suggest she compact the... Um, download fonts in wrong format. What format are you trying? Because, like, uh, to be honest, Creative Fabrica does not have a lot of embroidery fonts. And what they do of what they do have they have a few alphabets like I guess with big monograms or big um lettering and you I don't know how many um I mean it should come in all the formats that you need but um yeah I guess contact the company directly or give me more details about it because I don't understand quite um She downloaded the wrong format. Oh, and she already paid for the the one file. I get it now. Yes. Send their customer service an email. I'm sure it's not a problem for them to go ahead and um, and give you access or send you the, the format you meant to download. Yeah, I definitely think they would be on top of that. Hi, Bonnie. Glad you got to um, join us tonight for your first live. Paula is laying back in bed. It is 1.17 a.m. Girl, you better than me because I'm snoozing at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, so I'm blabbing. So let's get started. Um, so I showed you the dish towels in the oven mitt. And let me show you the design. Now, I just opened the design. It has a lot of jump stitches. So um, Bailey wanted to know about using HTV um, with the pot holder. Do you think it's going to be a problem with grabbing hot stuff? I don't think it would be, if anything. It likes heat. We're putting the hot, hot iron on it. I don't think it should be a problem. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I think it'll be fine. So, okay. All right, so let me go over to, okay, so I'm looking away from the comments now. I'm not seeing them anymore. Um, here is, let me open up the original one. Okay. I'm going to show you my computer now so I won't see y'all or your comments. Okay, one day I will get a better setup to where I actually share my screen with you, but I'm not that techie. So, um, this is the wreath um, straight from the Creative Fabrica website. Um, and it's a simple little wreath with a bow and then it has some ornaments. Um, for some reason, they actually have the jump, like normally when I open a design in in brilliance it doesn't actually show me the jump stitches but i think the jump stitches are actually programmed into the design uh for this one and they have some strange ones and this has happened to me before where they have like they start a stitch here and then they jump and start stitching i think it's supposed to somewhat lock in the stitches here uh i do have one solution for this if you i know we've been talking a lot about in brilliance um so this, most people will have Embrilliance Essentials, but if you did upgrade recently and add on Embrilliance Enthusiast, we can use the individual stitch editor button and go in and like click that one stitch and delete it. And so then that's gone. So those are some options. Um, if those bother you, they're not gonna be, it's not that big of a deal because we're just going to cut them all out with our little scissors after. But this makes makes me, you know, 
look at it and be like, okay, after each step, I'm gonna cut those jump stitches before I move on to the next step. Because if I waited for all this to be done to clean up when the whole design is done, that would be chaos. So also if you have, I think this might be complicated too for people that do have a nicer machine that automatically cuts jump stitches, um, it may not cut these. So that's something to keep in mind. It did look like the six by, two, this is the five by seven option. It did look like the six by 10 option didn't have these lines. So I think they took into consideration that most six by 10 machines cut jump stitches, um, but five by sevens don't. So this is the design. I decided to shrink it down a little bit and I'm gonna open up this one um, because it is a little big. I think that would be a little bit too big for the um, for the dish towel I'm using. Um, and if I select it, all I did was go right here and it did say 100 and I changed it to 85. My rule of thumb is that you can decrease or increase the size of something by 20%. So like I wouldn't go below 80% on this design um, or above 120% if I wanted to make it bigger. So I just did that. Um, I deleted a couple of these um, random jump stitches, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I was thinking of adding some wording underneath. So I'm just selecting it and using my cursor to move it to the top of the hoop here. And something me and my mom always say, like we don't say Merry Christmas, we say Merry Merry. So I thought that would be cute to have on the bottom. So I'm gonna hit that and now let me pick a font. And because the um let's see, because the um towel is let's see, I might change this a little bit. Because the towel is a busy pattern. I want to make sure my, I, I'm using like a thicker satin font. I wouldn't do a bean stitch um, font on that busy material because I don't think you would see it. So let me let me change this to just Mary one time. And I'm going to put it probably right here. And now I'm going to go up here to copy and paste. And now I have two of them. I'm trying to think of how I can put this to where um, they will fit. I might have to use a, a smaller font. Or I can do it like this. We just play around with it and see. You know, you could put your last name. Um, I think what I'm going to do is have it under here. And I can see that's the center. If I do it like that, then I'm just gonna shrink this up, oops, a little to where the Y is there. And let me zoom in to see how far away. This one's kind of touching a little bit. So let me go down and then I might move that up just a smidge, okay. So I think that's fine. And then something else that we can do is go to stitch and increase the compensation. I might just do one point there. Just It just fills it out a little bit more and makes it a smidge thicker. So I really wanna make sure it's nice and thick that you can see it well on that busy pattern tile. So I think that's it for the design. Oh, something else that would be cute is you can put um, like the first letter of your last name you could put that in the middle of the wreath too that would be cute so this is my design so now I'm just going to save that and then we can go um, hoop the top so any questions let me save this real quick Mary Mary on my towel. Saved it as a PES file and then I will eject. We'll make sure it's saved right. Mary Mary PES eject. 
everyone wants you to move the wreath up a tad away from the lettering. I can do that. Okay, I'll move the wreath more up to the top of the screen and have more space there between the bottom of that ri uh, ribbon and the Mary Mary. So tell me how you like this. Is that better? y'all very much. Okay, making sure my wreath is in the center and my Mary Mary is in the center. That looks good. I might move this Mary up just a smidge. Okay, better? Thank y'all. Okay, then I'm gonna save again. Save stitch file as Oh, I, I'm, I gotta put my thing back in. It is getting a little warm in here, guys, because I have my heat press on. <laughs> All right. Uh, da, da, da. Where's Mary Mary? Don't even see it. That's weird. I just saved it. I just made sure it was there. Oh, it's totally blind. It's right there. Save. Replace. Done. Now I can eject my file, my flash drive. Okay. Plug in the machine. Go back to YouTube. Okay. So, y'all like that better. Okay, can anyone help me? I've been looking for a PE 800. No luck. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, I have not had luck with the PE 800. I checked today. Not on Amazon, not on Swing Design, not on Sewing Machines Plus. Those are my three places I always check. Um, but just keep checking. I mean, it's so random when it comes in stock. Um, I, I literally check almost every day for those machines and for the NQ 1600 because those are the most popular. Um, I did see the SE1900 Sewing Machines Plus had today when I checked. That is a combo machine. It's like the PE800, plus it's, it has a sewing machine in it. Um, so you can take the embroidery arm off and use it as a sewing machine or put the embroidery arm on and use it as a, um, as, and it works just like this, all the same functions as the PE800. So if that's something you're interested in, um, the SE1900 is something that you could look at. It was in stock at Sewing Machines Plus the last I checked, and I have a coupon code for them. If you send me a message on Facebook, I can send it to you. And yeah, and Bridget's saying that um, Mr. Vac and Mrs. So in New York um, has some. Yeah, they're such great machines. That's why they fly off the shelf. Yep. I've heard people buying them directly from Brother as well. Ooh, Veronica got the NQ1600. Yay! Congrats on your new machine. So, okay, let's go get to... Oop, and I'm going to unplug my phone. I hope I have enough charge. And let's go... Hoop. Okay, so any more questions before I put y'all on the pegboard? <laughs> Ooh, Bailey got a 10 needle. You're so fancy. I'm jealous. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's see. I saw Vicky said, where did I get my thread stand? On Amazon. I will post a link to all of the supplies that I use um, in the description box below. If not, you can go to carlybell.com slash sip in stitch. And um, I have a list to all the supplies um, that I use for, for this project. I have that listed on the website. I didn't put it in the description box yet, but I will as soon as the video is over. Okay, so let me move this. I think I have this good. Let's see how this goes. Okay, y'all got a good view. We're a little close to the, to the, there we go. That's a little better. Okay, so tonight's project, 
we are using a five by seven hoop and tear away stabilizer. And we're probably gonna use some water solvy um, topper on top, but I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna I'm break from the norm and I'm gonna do something a little different tonight. So first, I should cut the tags off the towel. That might help. Be surprised how many times I embroider things and I, I just left the tags on the towels. <laughs> so this is a nice woven, it's kind of got some, you know, it's, it's on the thin side, definitely. Um, so it probably wouldn't even hurt if you're doing a really dense design, it would not hurt to do two layers of state of, um, of tear away on the back of here to make sure things don't pucker. Um, but this is the towel. And normally what I do is I figure out placement. So if I'm going to put this on my oven hanging, I'm probably going to do the same thing, the same way it was folded, folded in thirds and then half and it hang on my oven um, bar there. And I want the design here. So I'm looking at this half, but then I want it in the middle. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna take my ironing board off to the side so that I can have a nice flat surface. Use my big pretty ruler. It is slightly bigger than my ruler. I can eyeball it, I think. I also have this ruler. All right, if you noticed, Elise has not come barging in tonight, demanding that I draw her a dragon because her daddy is home. <laughs> if you missed last week's Sip and Stitch, whoo, it was a good one. It was a real life one. <laughs> um, my husband was out of town and my girls were in rare form. So, okay. I have, um, this is about 18 and a half, so nine and a quarter. I did good with eyeballing it. So about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that ruler here. Nine and a quarter. Now I'm going to use my grid for the five by seven hoop. It might be hard to see over this, all this pattern we have going on here. But um, I am going to place that middle of the grid line on that nine and a quarter mark on my ruler. And it's nice that I do have this grid because I can see that I have my, my grid straight and it's not like turned and wonky. Um, so that's a little bit helpful when you're using a, a, um, a plaid or um, a patterned material. So you can keep it in line with the pattern. So, I'm just eyeballing it as far as the middle from top to bottom, but I know I have it in the middle of the towel, so I'm gonna hold this and pull it out. And then if I want it to be extra, I can do this and seven is the middle and look at that, my eyeball is pretty good. So that is where I want my design. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my favorite um, water soluble fabric marker and I'm gonna make little placement marks. Some of them are gonna be hard to see because they're right on the black, of course. This one I can see, that one I can't see. Yeah, only two of them are gonna work. So let's just hope I can see a little hint of purple in these black spots. No, not even close. Okay, so I'm gonna do something different. I got that lined up. I'm going to go ahead and wait, I moved it. Uh, I'm going to have to just go with it. All right, I got one good dot I can see, and I'm just going to use the fabric, to, the lines of the fabric to help guide me to make sure I'm doing a straight line. Okay, so that's one dot and the other dot is here. So I just got a little bit of this pattern poking out. And we'll go here. I 
they also make chalk um, pencils, which I've been meaning to order a new one. The one I have is really old, but they have these that if you, I could have made marks with this and I might have seen it a little bit better, but this is good enough. Okay, so that's my marks on my towel. They might be a little hard for you guys to see, but I can see them. So now that we're done with that, put that on the side. And I cut, I had a piece of tearaway already cut. I was actually demonstrating something to somebody else, so it's all ready to go. But you have your five by seven hoop. Mine is always dirty. I keep saying I'm gonna clean them, I never, I never do. Um, <laughs> but make sure your hoop is in the right, fitting into it correctly. And the way you know it's fitting in it correctly is if, um, first off, it's indented. This flat side is the bottom. Second, there's a tiny little triangle here pointing up and a tiny little triangle here pointing down. So I see that those two line up. So I know my hoop is incorrectly. And when my hoop is incorrectly, my grid will fit it the way it's supposed to and be in the right orientation with this little circle being in the top right corner. So we are floating the towel tonight. And floating means we're only gonna hoop the stabilizer. So I just am hooping the tear away, pushing that in, making sure it's really nice and taut and tight and fits, you know, you could hear it like a drum. Okay, then I'm going to snap my grid in and use my marker to make some placement. And you'll see it a lot better on this nice white stabilizer. And then use a ruler to again, Make yourself some crosshairs. Like that. And then I wanna make it sticky so that my towel will stick to it. You can use peel and stick stabilizer, but this towel it probably would work fine for because this towel is not like a loopy, fluffy towel. Um, this one I probably could lay on sticky stabilizer and it'd pull right off, but I already have this ready. So I'm just gonna make it sticky. And so that I don't get overspray all over my table and especially don't get overspray anywhere near your machine. I'm far away from my machine right now when I spray this. But I'm gonna stick my hoop in a bag and spray it. And one day I'm gonna go to Dollar Tree and buy the steering wheel cover. I keep saying I'm gonna get two. <laughs> when I get that, then I'll clean my hoops. So this is sticky and it's a temporary spray. It's um, it's not gonna make your towel all sticky. Um, and it's also to where if I lay my towel down and it's not in the right spot, I could easily pull it up and get it back into place. So this is gonna be a little tricky because it's hard to see these lines these lines, but I'm going to put my finger, okay, so there's my dot. I'm gonna put my finger over the where this horizontal line is and try and put it directly over the dots and on the stabilizer, if you could see that. And then I'm gonna try and line this line here, go down with this line as I'm laying it. way off. Okay. There. There. Okay. Now let me look up. I also don't think this towel is going to stick very good at all. Maybe I should use the sticky tear away. Okay. I'm trying to put this dot right there and that dot there. That line looks like it's going down nicely. This one looks good. And this one looks good. Okay, so then we are just rubbing the towel on top of the hoop. And this is where I, I'm gonna deviate from my normal. My normal would be to go ahead and pin some water soluble topper on here now, but I'm gonna go ahead and wait until after I have my two applique pieces on here. So this is where I'm gonna need your opinion. 
Um, so it's a wreath I'm gonna do in green, and I'm gonna do the ribbon in red. These are the two greens I have. I have this one is kind of a, a leafy um, pattern on it, and this one is just a green. It almost looks looks spray paint or airbrush. It's kind of textured looking. So I don't have like a dark green. Well, I do. Wait, let me see. I have these like very solid greens too, but these were kind of boring to me. I wanted to do something a little more fun. So let me look and see what you think. Hello, how are you? Okay, let me look up. Textured, 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 tie dye looking one, textured, textured. Okay, so everybody likes this one. Yes? This one looks good for the, um, the wreath. Yay, thank y'all very much. Okay, so we'll do this for the wreath. Then we're gonna be a little extra fun tonight with filling the applique um, part of the ribbon. We're gonna do with heat transfer vinyl. This is glitter heat transfer vinyl. So this is something I would usually iron on shirts and this is something like what we're gonna do on the we're gonna use this on the um, oven mitt as well tonight. So I'll show you how you can use heat transfer vinyl with your embroidery as well. So this is gonna be our wreath and then we're gonna put some ornaments. I was gonna do ornaments in red, white, and silver. I think that will be good for the black and white towel. We'll kind of keep a low muted color, screen, uh, color scheme besides the red and green. Um, so that will be the, the ornaments on the wreath. Um, and then once this starts, once we're done with the applique with this and it's just stitching, then we'll get started on the oven mitt with just the heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna deviate from normal and instead of putting my water soluble topper now, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna stitch the placement stitch and tack down for the green and the heat transfer vinyl. And when those are trimmed and ready, then I'm gonna put the water soluble topper down and then it will do the satin outline stitch for everything. So let's go ahead and then we do still need to put heat and bond on the back of this. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So I'm gonna carefully carry my hoop over to the machine. All right. And turn it on. This is ready. I'm gonna load the pattern by pressing the USB button. I have an older model PE770, so it's not as nice as the PE800 with a nice color screen where you could actually see what you're looking at. Um, so I have learned to decipher my designs. I used to only have one design on the USB stick so that it was like no question. This is the design I'm stitching. <laughs> but. I've gotten lazy with deleting things over the years, so I do have a few on here right now. Okay, see, I passed it up. It's somewhere. No, wait, no, maybe. Nope. I named it Mary Mary, so it's M-E. It should be here, but it's not. Shark, that's an M, that's the family. I saved it, I know I did. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. Oops, plug this in my machine. Okay, sorry, and then my big arm is in the, <laughs> in the frame again. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, let me make sure I saved it as the right thing. It says Mary Mary PES, but I don't see a picture. It's blank. That's weird. Okay, let me delete it. Move to trash. Because I could see it in thumbnailer on my computer. Um, okay, so I have it plugged in. Go to file, save stitch file as. Mary. I'll just save it as that. You know what? If I save it as one, let's just do one. Then it will be the first thing on there and I won't have to go searching for it. Okay, now let me look. Nope. What am I doing? I'm probably not saving it to where I'm supposed to. Let me see. There it is. It's there. It's there and in brilliance, but it's not showing on my flash drive. Let's try this again. I don't know what the problem is. I'm going to highlight the whole thing, copy it, open in a new hoop, paste it, save as PES file, save. It's not showing up on my flash drive. This is so weird. Well, this ain't good. I need another flash. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay, eject. Now it's showing it being the last design. Okay, let's try this again. Sorry for the difficulties. So plugging it in, pressing USB. It's on there. It's on there twice. I don't know why it wasn't showing it. Okay, so it's the first thing like I wanted it to be. And I'm going to select. And so I could see. I'm going to slide this. And make sure my hoop is on and lift it and make sure that if the brackets are not coming up. Also make sure all the rest of your towel is not going to get folded and go underneath the hoop and the machine. Anything that gets caught up in here, your towel will get stitched to itself and it won't be any more good. So make sure everything is spread out. Nothing back here is going to get folded up and go underneath it on accident. I have silver loaded on here. I'm going to use red. So I'm going to cut and pull. Don't ever pull your, your thread backwards. Through the thread path. My first thing is green. I think I'll see green on here. I'll do green. So I normally when I'm doing applique, I'll do everything in the, the color that the first reel stitches in. And if I look at in brilliance, the first reel stitch is green. So I'm just loading green now so that I'm not changing the red colors until after that green satin stitch of the wreath is done. So I have green loaded. Everything's ready. Now I'm going to stitch. Let me make sure. There's no way it could be in the wrong orientation, right? Okay, I was making sure my orientation is right because I have bad luck with that <laughs> sometimes. So now it is stitching. doing the outline of where we're going to put the green fabric. So it's showing me with all applique, you always have three steps. You have your placement stitch. That's showing you where to put your fabric. Once that's done, I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that's going to fit over that nicely just in a square or a rectangle. Then I'm going to um, place the fabric on it and then we'll do the tack down stitch. This will actually tack the fabric down to the towel and then when that's done that's when we trim the fabric with our little favorite scissors snip snip 
then once that's done, then the final stitch um, or the finishing stitch, this could be a variety of things. For this project, it is a satin stitch. Okay, so that placement is done. You can't really see it good. It's green. Um, but now the next step is to do the, you can see, the next step would be the tack down for the wreath. I'm gonna go ahead and skip and I wanna do the placement of the ribbon. I wanna knock both of those out at one time. So I'm gonna hit the adjust button. You may just see a little needle with a plus and minus. Press that. What did I do? Okay, I went back. Um, the spools of thread show you how to jump ahead or go back whole steps. And then the needle um, plus and minus goes uh, jumps ahead or goes backward individual stitches. So I wanna jump ahead a step, jump ahead a step. Now this is the placement stitch for the ribbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and press start and do that. And still keeping the green on there. And this is just showing me how big of pieces of fabric I need to fill those spaces. And then we're gonna go back to the craft table. All right, so that is done. I'm gonna take the hoop off the machine, lift the presser foot, and you can barely see it, but we have an outline of a wreath in the ribbon. So now let's go figure out our fabric. So y'all have any questions for me? I need to put in my iron. This here, this here. I'm plugging in the baby iron. Okay. Hello. So any questions so far? Did you purchase the hot? Yes, I purchased the towels at Hobby Lobby. I cut the tags off. They were on sale. Let's see. This Robert Stanley collection. And it was, it says $6.99, but I'm pretty sure it was 50% off of that. And then the towel was, the, um, the oven mitt was the same. Okay. So, now all I'm doing is looking at my design. Where's my list? I see one jump stitch that it went from the inner part of the wreath to the outer part. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that now and just get that off. Okay, so, oh no, your Hobby Lobby's closed. The only other was to inquire about water soluble topper used on this project. Yes, I'm gonna use water soluble topper, but I'm gonna wait to put it until after I trim my two applique pieces. So I'll show you in a little while. So right now I'm just gonna hold my green fabric over my placement stitch and I'm going to cut a piece that is just a slightly larger than the wreath. So I'm just using my fabric scissors to cut. I'm probably doing this all wrong. I should have did it from a different way, but oh well. Okay, I'm just cutting a piece that's a little bigger than what I need. So now I have a square of green fabric. And then for the ribbon, I'm gonna use glitter heat transfer vinyl. And I had some scraps. I keep all my scraps of heat transfer vinyl. And this piece looks almost perfect to fit over it already yay okay so i think this piece i don't need to trim it or um, i don't need to cut a piece i already had a piece that fits it so now what i'm gonna do is for the green piece i'm gonna add some heat and bond light onto the underside of it and i can show you that just put y'all up here So I have my green material and I have my, my roll of heat and bond. 
and I'm just going to cut a piece of heat and bond that's a little bit smaller than my material. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to lay it down and I like to use my little mini iron. I'll be using this little mini iron too to um, iron the piece down onto the, um, the towel after we trim it. So just let that kind of cool and then just peel the paper off. And so now you have an adhesive side to the back of your fabric, just like you have an adhesive side to the back of your heat transfer vinyl. So now we can take all of this and go back to the um, machine and do our tack down stitch. And then when that's done, let me actually cut it now. I'm gonna want some water soluble topper. Let me go ahead and cut it so that I have it over there by the machine and ready. So this is my water soluble topper. I'm gonna put that on after. So take all of this and go back to the machine and I'm holding it, making sure my towel doesn't shift. pieces. Don't need that yet. And I'm carefully sliding this back on the machine. And make sure my brackets are on. Okay, so you lift that up. That's not going anywhere. Make sure none of the towel is getting underneath the hoop. So that is done, and now I have to use my buttons again, the um, spool and uh, needle plus and minus, and I need to go backwards. Okay, so now we're at the beginning of the design again. This is the first placement stitch. Now I want the tack down stitch of the wreath. So I got that ready, and now I'm going to place my material right make sure i'm covering all my placement stitches and that my material's going to completely cover if you're using a material that has a pattern like a checkered pattern you know make sure your material is turned or straight the way you want it to be um, but since this is a nice textured solid fabric i am good so now i'm going to lower my presser foot and it's going to stitch the tack down stitch for the wreath. to show you my computer and show you the heat transfer vinyl um, design. I think it's really cute. It's a cookie. It says official cookie tester. I thought it was cute. They also have the design I picked actually also comes in an embroidery format, but the embroidery format, it only came in one size and it was like a uh, six by ten. Um, so you can shrink it down a little bit, but I wanted to do an applique on the towel. But if you wanted, if you like the cookie design, the cookie tester design, you can also get it in an embroidery design uh, format as well. So, what am I sipping tonight? My usual, my Malibu. Malibu splash. We have pineapple tonight. Next week I'm going to have to have a pink filler. It's been a while since I had pink filler. I think this is my last mile before anyway. <laughs> okay. 
what tip can you give for enthusiasts and thumbnailers? I love both of them. I, what, what do you need to know? <laughs> okay, so the wreath is done. Let's suppress her foot. Wreath is done. So, if you want to watch me trim this, let's go back to the craft table. Um, what brand is the green? Okay, so all my threads are exquisite brand. Where is it at? There we go. Exquisite. I buy them all from Sewing Machines Plus. I will have a link in the description box below after the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been using Exquisite since I got my machine. Um, I was recommended to me by somebody else. Um, and I've, I've loved it. My machine loves it. I never had a problem with it. I have ordered, I don't know what kind it was because this is way before Bro Thread came out, but it was a very cheap um, pack of thread from Amazon. It was like 20 bucks for a bunch of spools and it shredded and it broke every single time. So I finally was like, no, I need, I need good thread. So I, I purchased the exquisite. Okay, so. Here is the wreath, and these are my favorite scissors. And my newer ones have a piece of tape on them, so I know these are my real sharp ones. These are my old. These are probably six years old, but they still work. But these are sharper. So these are the ones I try to use for when I my fabric. So I'm just going to cut along, and I just kind of pull this up and glide the scissors underneath the, the, um, that side of the fabric. And just try not to snip the stitches themselves, but get as close as you can because this is gonna do a satin stitch when it's done. And that satin stitch is going to hide the raw edge of this fabric. You won't see that anymore. But if you don't cut it close enough, that raw edge might stick out past where the um, where the satin stitch goes, and then it'll look a little funky. But somebody is at my house. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm turning my arm all kind of weird ways instead of turning the hoop. Come on, Carly. <laughs> um, also. Lots of times happens to people when they're doing appliques, but try not, be very careful not to snip the item underneath that you are embroidering, whether it be a shirt or a towel. I try to keep my, my scissors as flush as possible and not like digging in it so I don't actually accidentally grab it. And so you can see the outline of where the the bow, the bow is going to go, the ribbon. So they're not, the design is made to where they don't overlap. Okay, and then we're going to have the tricky part of cutting out the middle part. So this is the same as when we do an applique letter, like the letter B or A, or anything that has a hole in the middle. We have to get this part out too. And we have one little jump stitch here. I'm going to get that out. Okay, so now we have this middle part of the wreath. What I'm gonna do is stick my, my scissors in. And I'm a, I could kind of feel, I'm trying to try to make just like a hole in that green and open it up and make sure that I could still see my towel material underneath. And I can, I can see it. Like I'm, I, I, I poke it and then I pull it up. So I'm trying to get it away from the towel material and then I snip. So now I have it and I could see my, my towel through there. So just carefully go back to the, the edges where the stitches are. and snip all the way around and trim that out. This can be tricky. So 
just keep practicing and feeling for it. Do you know, practice on some some um, old towels first, maybe, um, with designs that have holes in the middle that you have to cut out, and get a feel for it. Or an old shirt, because it is easy to poke through and accidentally cut the material underneath. We need some Christmas music in here. I think I'm gonna get a little speaker from my um my craft room, either a Google one or a, um an Amazon one. But we can't have it too loud though, cause then y'all wouldn't hear me talk for two hours. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie. All right, so there is our cute wreath. So now we're gonna, now the next step, try not to forget. So this is my process for applique. Placement, get your fabric, put your heat and bond on the back of it. Put it on there, tack down, trim. Before you go back to the machine, go ahead and iron this piece that you just trimmed. Now I, I'm going to put, if you have like just a, another sheet, another piece of material, like you could even use the other side of this dish towel. I always keep a piece of parchment paper on my craft table as like a, a protector. Um, Cause sometimes we have water soluble topper on here. We don't right now, but I'm still gonna go ahead and put something. And my mini iron fits nicely inside of my hoop so that I can take this and press my, fabric inside my hoop before I go to my next step. So this gets any possible wrinkles out before we go on to the next step. So now we're going to go back to the machine and we have our placement stitch already for the bow. So we're going to go tack down the bow with our glitter HTV, which is by the machine already. So, heat and bond and pressing, not only heat and bond, but pressing in between each applique piece makes a huge difference in the quality of your applique when you're done. That you, because these stitches, I hear at least yelling downstairs, <laughs> um, these stitches are not as tight as the satin stitches. So they will still allow the fabric to move to them. But like once you have that super tight satin stitch on the edge of here and say you have a wrinkle in the fabric and you iron it and move it to that satin stitch you'll have like a lump it, it won't move as nicely so I'm gonna put this back on the machine and okay so that's there make sure everything is out of the way Okay, now we have our HTV. Can't just put it on like this. The HTV always comes with what we call a, a carrier sheet and that's this clear glossy stuff. So when we peel this glossy layer off, now you have just your glitter showing and it's much thinner. This piece is like really thick for the HTV, like this is a lot thinner. So now we have our glitter HTV. And this is the adhesive side and the glitter side is up. So I'm gonna place that right on top of where my bow is. And I'm gonna jump ahead a step and I'm gonna jump ahead one stitch because it's gonna move again. Okay, because I wanna, I have a piece that's like just big enough to fit this area and I don't want it to start stitching and then move, and I move this piece and it not be in the right spot. So it's right where it's gonna do the first stitch. I have it there, I'm gonna hold the corner here far away from the needle, put the presser foot down, and start stitching. Okay. Keeping my fingers far away. If you have chopsticks or a pencil, this is when it's good to do like this instead to hold it down 
um, to make sure that it's not moving or um, bubbling up while it's stitching. You can do that. That would be the smartest thing to do to you put your fingers in there like pump it sometimes. Okay, what's up? Huh? Yeah, doing good. Huh? You were watching me. <laughs> My husband is watching me downstairs on the phone. You were blood woven when you were talking about cutting this. <laughs> okay, so now we are done with the tack down stitch of the ribbon. So we have two options. Where's my scissors? Okay. We have two options. Um, it's been 70 minutes already. 71. Okay. We're, we're getting there. We still got a whole nother project to do. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, Okay, we have two options here. Let me get this out of the way. Um, sometimes I can, sometimes, I c this glitter material almost is like tearaway. And if the, if the tack down stitch is good enough, you might be able, ooh, there it's working, is just pull it away. Now, if you're too nervous to do that, you can trim it with your applique scissors. Um, it depends on, like, I don't think it's gonna go in between here too good, we'll see. But I might be able to pull this. I did that good. So it's it's so so. We got some strange little pieces here. I'm gonna um I'm either going to try to tear or I'm just gonna trim them real quick with my scissors. But some of them look like they're not even gonna be far away from where the the satin stitch would be. So the HDV is pretty cool um, that you can use it. To fill your applique, it's already got the adhesive on the back, so you don't have to do any heat and bond. Um, and that it's almost like tear away because you can just pull it away. But then you're still gonna have your pretty um, satin stitch embroidery around it. So it's like the best of both worlds. So you can have HDV and embroidery all in one. Okay, I can't get it in some areas, but I think it's gonna get covered up by a satin stitch anyway. So if you can see, the bow is kind of weird because it's bigger on this side than on this side. So it looks weird now, but when it has the um, the finished satin stitch, it's gonna look better because it's gonna fill in the, the edges of the ribbon, how it's supposed to look. Okay, so before I move on, just like with any applique, I've trimmed it. Now I'm gonna press it real quick. What I did with my parchment paper. This is my parchment paper and my iron. And I'm just gonna press it down. In case there were any wrinkles in it, I can get that out before we do the satin stitch. Okay, so now we can bring this back to the machine. And now we're, we're going to have a long bit of green stitching. It's going to um, do the whole outline of the wreath and then some little holly berries. I think it goes around, but not holly, the holly, the leaves, the holly leaves. It's going to go around and do, and then we'll have to change the thread a few times for the ribbon and the ornaments. Um, but I'm going to do these, these colors for the ornaments. Uh, red, silver, and white. I think that'll be good. Keep it a little bit neutral. Okay, so looking at my machine, I can see the next step and looking on in brilliance. My next step is the, it actually has the green of the wreath and the green of the berries being different, but I mean the, uh, the little 
leaves, but I'm gonna keep it the same green. It's all the same to me. And I will be jump cutting jump stitches in between all those. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. And now we can talk about silhouette. So, oh wait, pause. I wanted to add my water soluble topper. Okay, so I already started stitching. So I I can't just slide this under because the thread is, is already going through and stuck. So I'm gonna cut. And then I'm gonna put this. Also have a tail. That's okay. Where's my scissors? They have a tail that's poking out right here when it started it and go through all the way. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna slide this here. And I could use some just to make sure because sometimes it'll it'll just bunch up while um it's doing the satin stitch like at the top of the wreath it might grab it and bunch it all up so I'm just gonna use some masking tape and tape it just so that the the water soluble topper doesn't move all around all crazy I'm just gonna top it the tape uh, tape it at the top and the bottom so now it won't move okay and then I'm just gonna go ahead and start again I don't need to back up because it was just doing a little I'll back up five stitches there we go and start okay so now we have our topper so now all of our satin stitches will have a nice clean edge and we'll be sinking and looking frayed on the edges with the with the fabric regular HTV is too thin. I personally have never used what I call smooth HTV. So this is all my HTV collection right there. Um, I have the smooth normal uh, uh, on the top and I have glitter on the bottom. I've always used glitter for applique. I've not tried smooth. I don't know how good it would look to be honest. I would stick with glitter. Removing the, the clear, I lost it. My, um, the carrier sheet on the HTV. Yes, I, I removed that before I added. All right. Okay. So if there are no, I see y'all talking, but I don't see any more questions. So um, if there's no more questions. I'm going to flip the phone around so y'all can see my computer again. And, um, y'all want to see the mystery husband? <laughs> he's a mess, y'all. Mm -mm. Um, he's actually, I think, on YouTube somewhere with his little dance troupe that he does, but we're not having Mardi Gras this year, so. He's, a, um, he's in this dance in New Orleans. We're crazy down here, guys. Um, we have, you know, our crazy Mardi Gras, and not only do we have parades with people throwing beads and stuff at you from the parade, but it, like in between uh, the floats, sorry, the floats. In between each float, we usually have a either like a high school or college marching band, um, which are awesome. Usually all the time, like they're, they're so awesome. Um, and then we have crazy grown-ups that are not in high school or college, but want to march in a parade, and so they form dance troops and they. We have some 
really, really awesome ones. And my husband's in one called the 689 Swampers. And, uh, and they are, they're special. They're very, very special. <laughs> and uh, so he's on YouTube for that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, you want to know, I see Nelly wants to know how to back up stitches. So it depends on your machine. Brother machines are really simple to navigate, I find. So um, the brother machine has an icon somewhere on your machine that looks like a needle point with a plus and a minus next to it. So on, oh, I stopped my machine. I can't, I can't go back on mine. Okay, um, on mine there was a needle point with a plus and a minus, and then when I touched it, I see a spool with a minus and plus and a needle with a minus and plus. When I hit the spool, I can navigate and go ahead, jump ahead like whole steps, like each color. And with the needle, I could go front and back individual stitches. So if you have a brother machine, that's where it's at. Um, if you have a different brand, I can't help you. But I'm sure it's something like that. And you can look in your manual. Every machine should have something to where you can navigate and move exactly in the design where you want to go. So like if your needle broke or something didn't stitch right, you want to go back over it and fix it. If it's still in the hoop, you should be able to navigate on your machine and get your needle to go right where you want it to go and start stitching again. Um, okay. Was that Debbie that, no, Nelly is asked the question. Um, oh, Lydia said, um, yeah, we're not having water girl this year. I don't think 2021 is going to be very much different from 2020, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, good, Lydia. I'm glad you got it. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, let's talk about silhouette. So, I picked... Let me open up. Hi. What, baby? Oh, she's here. She's here. What's up? Hello. What's your, what's your name, pretty girl? Elise. Elise. <laughs> I'm your kid. <laughs> You're so silly. You're so silly, you know that? Okay, you want to tell everybody? What, what, what's your job when mommy does a video? What do you say? Ladybug, ladybug. <laughs> okay, what, when you say ladybug, ladybug, what does that mean? Ladybug, ladybug, ladybug. But that, what, that's, that's what that means. I know, but they might not know what ladybug means. Don't put that in your mouth. Ladybug, ladybug, ladybug. Okay, but tell them what that means, because they might not speak ladybug. It means six five. Subscribe. And what? Click the bell. That's what it means. And what else? Well, you sound very demanding tonight. <laughs> Say give this video a thumbs up. Pretty please. And that also means give that video a thumbs up. Yeah. That's what ladybug ladybug means. Okay, thank you. It's speak I was speaking in ladybug. Yes, we know you like to speak in ladybug. Ladybug, 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 ladybug. Thank you, ladybug. Okay, mommy's gotta get back to showing them how to do some stuff. Okay, we're gonna make some pretty Christmas towels. I'm so excited. Could I have one? Yeah, you can play with it when I'm done. Could you make one for me? Yes, ma'am. Go close please. mommy's door for me, please. So your dragon cycle. Okay, so <laughs> thank y'all so much. Yes, ladybug means. Please give this video a thumbs up. I got a nice satin stitch going on there. Can you close mommy's door for me, please? She's singing. Okay. Um, all right, so let me pull up. Here we go. Oh, goodness. Where's your iPad? I don't know. Go find it. Is that okay? design it comes in an SVG format so that means that you can open it in whatever software 
for whatever machine that you use. SVG should be able to open in almost all of them. I know with Silhouette, we have different levels of software and I think you have to have the designer edition to be able to open SVGs. So make sure you have, um, I think with the basic edition, you can only open Silhouette Studio files. Um, but make sure you uh, at least get the designer edition. I highly recommend getting the designer plus if you can, because with that, you can also open embroidery files and cut your applications. Um, which we'll do that in another, I've done it in one like regular video, not a live, but we'll do it in a live one day. So let me show you, this is, this is the regular one, okay. Um, let me show you the, the cookie, official cookie tester design. All right, so I'm going to turn you all around so I won't be able to see your questions, but. Oops, where are we? There we go. So this is the design, official cookie tester, and it has these cute leaves with some little holly berries, and it has lots of little snowflakes. Now, honestly, for the design that we are cutting, and with it being so small, you're not going to be able to cut these snowflakes. Like, these are super detailed. They're really great snowflakes, but for how small we are cutting, these are too, they're going to end up being too small to cut for the HD, HTV. So what I want to do, and norm, I, I kind of liked this, because normally when I open an SVG file, everything is grouped together, and I have to go and ungroup it if I want to change anything, or especially if I want to move and cut things of, you know, all the stuff in red, I'm gonna cut in red vinyl, and I need to move it somewhere else on my mat. So this one, like everything is already ungrouped, like each, each thing is its, is its own. So what I did was I selected everything and you could see all those little snowflakes are a lot of pieces. And I hold down the shift key and I just selected the things I want to keep. Like I want to keep the leaf, the red berries and all the letters. And I'll keep those little swooshes too. So this was a little bit tedious to do, but this was my choice that I don't want to, this, I thought this was the easiest way to go and delete all of those snowflakes um, because the snowflakes aren't even one piece. Some of these snowflakes are several pieces. So I'm still holding the shift key. I'm un, like unselecting everything I want to keep. I want to keep these swooshes. Okay, so I think I have unselected everything I want to keep, and I can make sure by clicking it and dragging it away. And so, yeah, they're all away, and now I'm just going to hit delete. So now I have, this is more simple. I'm only going to do two colors, the green and the red, but I need to have, and I also sized, I had already selecting everything here. I already sized this. It's about five and a half inches wide by four inches tall. And I measured my um, my oven mitt. To, I think that's going to be a nice size on here. It's okay. So y'all can see all this, right? Okay. Um, so I have this size the way I want. So with SVGs, you can size however you want. It's not like embroidery where you have to be, you know, only sizing, um, oh, I don't like that at all. Uh, only sizing at 20%. You can do whatever you want. So now I need all the red stuff to come out of here and I'm gonna cut everything else green. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna hold the shift key, select all the red, and now I'm gonna group it where now it's only gonna be one thing. So I'm gonna right click it and go to group so now all the red is in one so now i can move it away and it's good um so i'm going to move that over here and i need to zoom out okay and then 
I'm going to select all the green and I'm going to group that. So now this just made my life easier. I got two things selected now. Okay. Um, whenever you cut HTV, it has to be in a mirror image and you'll get this, you'll get a, um, a notification whenever you send it to your machine asking, do you want to send it as a mirror image or as is? I always like to flip it before I cut it just so that I know I'm placing my stuff in the right way. So all I do is click what I want and right click it and then go to flip horizontally. And so now it's a mirror image and I'll do the same thing for the red flip horizontally. And now I'm going to move it in the uppermost corners of my mat and I'm going to take note how big, if I go cut a green piece of vinyl, how big of that vinyl do I need? And I just use my grid lines to, um, to say, so like this is five and a half. It's a little more than that. So I'll just go ahead and go to six. So I want a piece that's six inches wide. And this is what, four, four and a half. So I'm gonna just write down on my paper, I need six, by four and a half of green. And for red, I need, and I'm going backwards here, so I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five and a half-ish. So I'll do five and a half times, I'll probably do a little more than, I could move this up higher. So you can go as close to this red line um, right here, you don't want to go above that red line because then it won't cut. This is like your border, your cut border, this red line. So I can go as close to the, the line to the side and as close to the top. So then I'm not wasting any vinyl. So I'm, I'm well above. So I'm going to do by one and a half. So that's how big of a red piece of vinyl I need. So that is me setting up the design before I send it. Let me see. Do y'all have any questions? I'm going to quickly change the thread on the machine now. Um, I'm going to lift the presser foot. I did have a little crazy jump stitch um, across the, the ribbon here. I'm going to go ahead and it's almost, it's not even a jump stitch. It's like a basting stitch. I'm going to go ahead and trim that before I load the next color. Yeah, and the basting stitch comes right out. Like I just have to snip it one time and then I can pull up the rest. And it's, it's super easy to come out and then I snip the other one. So that was easy. There are also some little random jump. I think these are where some ornaments are gonna be. So it didn't, you see, so it's, it's built in where there's not too much bulk and overlapping stitches. It didn't stitch the satin stitch here in here because they're gonna be ornaments there. So you can see where they have spaces there. So the design is done well to where they won't be too bulky in those areas. All right, I'm gonna load this back on and look at Embrilliance and see what my next I forget what my next color is gonna be. Make sure your hoop is on good. All of these. Okay. Let me look at Brilliance and see. Oh, the next step is the green. It's still the, um, the leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the green on and start stitching. Okay. So, sorry. I've been away. So tell me all your questions. <laughs> All right, Carol says no new questions. There, so. um, okay, y'all, we're talking about layering vinyl. I think that, that's what y'all are talking about. So, yeah, so tonight I'm going to show you. So we have two colors, and yes, we're going to layer them. We're going to do the green first. We're going to press it, and then we're going to peel off 
the carrier sheet and then we're gonna just look at the um, red and you can like look at your original design. I have one thing to do with the silhouette. So, okay, all right, it's stitching the, um, the leaves and the leaves are a little thick, so it's kind of a little bit. Okay, so let's pull up silhouette again. All right, um, something that you can do, and there are a lot of tricks for layering. To be honest, I haven't even tried them really. I, I've, I've gotten lucky with doing simple things, but when you have really complicated layering, there is a trick to where I can draw a little square here, and I would have had to done do it. Okay, so one trick is that always keep a copy of your original design before you move the red over here. Keep a copy of it either in another um, tab or uh, uh, off in the corner. I, I, I sometimes always keep stuff over here in the space that's away from the cutting mat. Um, another option would be to take the drawing tool, draw a square, and I can just draw a little square right there, okay? And I'm going to fill it with green, just so that's gonna go with my green, okay? And then I could take it, copy it. Um, what's this? Copy, paste. And I'm gonna go put it, uh, now I'm gonna make it red. Let's fill it with red, red. I'm gonna put it right on top. And you can even like select, to make sure you have them on top. You could select both. And what's this one? Center to page. So now they are like directly on top of each other, the red and the green. And I could select the red and then hold down my shift, select all of these. This one I didn't have groups like I did the other one, I just had it done. So select all my red. Okay, right click. So now that red is with that. And then I would select all this. And this green is with that. Group that. Group. So now, when I have these two pieces, let's see. That would only work with sticky vinyl. I don't think it's going to work with HTV. But I could. No, it wouldn't work. That's more for sticky. I'm sorry. The trick I was just showing you, that's for sticky vinyl, not for HTV. What, baby? Could you wear your pajamas like this, too? Uh, yeah, I could do that later. Okay. We can match? Okay. Yeah. Alright, thank you. I, I keep this in my album box for a long time, and I didn't You even, forgot all about it? Yeah! Oh, you're so crazy. Just tell me about her pajamas. <laughs> and I just found out. Okay. Alright. Sorry, I was being, I was probably confused a lot of y'all. That little trick I was showing you, that only works with sticky vinyl. That's not gonna work with HTV. But I'm, I'm telling you, when we look back, I'm gonna go ahead and back all this up and go back to my design. Keep a, keep a original so you can see something to look at before, and then it's gonna be really easy to put that, I'm gonna do the green first and then I'm gonna layer the red on top after the green, and it's gonna be easy to see where to place it. You know, the, the red cookie's gonna go right in the middle, and then those holly berries should fit right around the leaf. So, um, usually with layering, it's just always looking at the original design with all the colors put together, and, and really just eyeballing it, and you know, just keeping one piece at a time, and then putting the next one over it where you think it should go, and how to look like your original. Okay, we are done with the holly leaves, and we have those basting stitches in between each one again, so I'm going to cut those, and once you snip one, I could take my scissors and just glide it underneath there and then it just pulls right out. So that's all I'm doing. Or you can use a, um, a C9 
seam ripper to get it. But they're pretty easy to come out. Not much different than a regular jump stitch where it jumps from one end to the other. So I'm just going to get those out. And then I think the next step is we have two ornaments. I think that's going to be the silver. So I can load silver next. So we'll change thread color. So this whole time we've had green on there and now we're finally ready to change a thread color. It's raining. Snip. Okay, done with that. So there is our oops, wreath with the leaves. And those are little holly berries, um, kind of like on our cookie design. All right, so this one's probably gonna be a quick, a quick stitch because there's only two little ornaments that are silver. So I'm gonna cut my green thread here, pull it out through the needle at the bottom. And then load my green. Um, any questions? Okay. All right. And if for any reason I'm all over the place and I do not get to your question in the live chat, if you go and post your question in the comment box below, I do try to always go back and answer comments on all my YouTube videos um, when they're done any in the comment section. I might I might I can't go back and answer questions in the chat when the video is done, but in the comment box below I can um, I can go back and answer questions. So if I don't get the to them tonight after the video is over, go put them in there. Okay. We're doing those two ornaments. I'm doing them in silver. Just have a look here. Okay, so now I have a note of six by four and a half of green and five and a half by one by five of red. And I'm gonna go to my cutting table and I have my vinyl. So this is where I use my, I'm all crooked. Okay, um, this is where I use my cutting mat that's on my board and I use my acrylic ruler a lot and my rotary cutter. I do a lot of cutting vinyl on my cutting mat. I'm not as much of a sewer as I would like to be, but hopefully I will in, in the future. Though I don't cut fabric so much, I cut vinyl. <laughs> so I have two kinds of green vinyl. I wanted to ask your opinion. This is the smooth, regular green flat vinyl. Um, it's, it's a little bit glossy, but it's, it looks glossy here because this is that clear carrier sheet on top. Um, this is a metallic -y green. Can you see that like pearl iridescent? This is like a pearly green. So which one do you like for the lettering on top of the buffalo check? We have the pearly one or the regular green one. Let's see. Change into other pants. You changing? Okay, baby. Um, okay, and the the thread is already finished. When it has like a texture to it, it pulled a little bit, but it's okay. So you see it's kind of got like a wave in it. And there were some jump stitches, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. Okay, y'all think about which one y'all like. Y'all like the smooth green or that more pearly metallic green? The metallic-y one is a little bit lighter in color, I find. Okay. 
So the next color is, let's mix. Next we'll do white, and then last is red. What color you think y'all think we should do the Mary Mary in? Should that be in in green too? Or maybe I can't stop it now, but I could do one in green and one in red. If I'm good if I'm good with stopping my machine because I already have it set up to be one step. I have to do that too. If I would have thought about it earlier, I could have did it before I took the green thread off so we would have had less color changes. So now, what I said next, white, oh wait, I need to cut. Okay, so let's look over. Everybody likes, looks like the pearly one is winning for the um, HTV. All right, we can do the pretty pearl color. Yes, it does. Yes. She's asking me what her um, puppy Dana says. Okay, so Mommy, we were talking say that. about. Mommy, it doesn't say can that. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Hello, hello, hello. Mommy, it doesn't say that. Okay, it was showing that I was Mommy, live, my shirt but it looks like on that. my computer. Okay, hold on one second. It was showing that I was mm -hmm. live, but um, my computer looks like it's taking a while to catch up. So, so sorry, my phone was acting wonky. I forgot to put on the do not disturb, so it was not, um, it was, somebody was trying to call me and it messed it up, so I went and turned all that off, so mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Say that. Okay, go ask Daddy what your shirt says. I know what he did. Oh, what he said. The same thing as you. Okay, what do you want your shirt to say? I want it to say I like, I like my parents. Oh, your shirt says I like my parents. What do you know? That's so awesome. Are you happy? Yes. Okay. So, um, um, all right. Okay. We're talking about the basing stitches of the design. So, unfortunately, that is the way the design has been digitized. So, um, if you have enthusiasts, you can go and delete those basting stitches, and then they would just be a full-on jump stitch. Um, I started to do that, but it was a little bit tedious, so I was like, it'll be fine, I'll just trim them. Um, so, but you can, if you have in brilliance enthusiasts, you can go and delete those individual basting stitches. Um, so, some of these look like they're jump stitches, and some of them are still basting stitches, so I don't know, that's just the, the choice of the digitizer. Okay. Mm. Don't touch anything, ma'am. Don't touch anything. Ooh, it's getting hot in here with the heat press on. Look, mommy's hot things on. Okay, so don't go by it. You see my hot thing? My heat press. Uh -huh. Don't put that in your mouth, ma'am. Just put the pin in there. Okay. In okay, fact, let me turn the fan on. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. These are mommy's special yeah. pins. Yeah. That's my yeah. special pins. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. your colors downstairs in the front room. That's where all your colors are. Okay? All the colors of the rainbow. The the rainbow. Okay. So, let me, so we just finished the white. And so let me cut these jump and basting stitches. Um, so I'm gonna color in here. She needs you have to go downstairs and get all the colors. You got them? I'll go get them, boo. Yeah. What colors do we need, baby? Daddy, these are the puffins bother me some. No, those are the ones you like, baby. But they bother me. No, they don't bother you. I'm going to bother you. <laughs> no, the headphones. Oh, the headphones. Sometimes they bother me. Okay. All right. Just try them on. So you have it. The, we are almost done. We 
almost done with the embroidery and we just have to cut the um we made the vinyl design and we have to cut it and then press it good job she need me to bring her if she wants colors but if she might be happy with just the ipad please could you go get all my colors where's all the colors in the front room on the table where they do homework and stuff right, I got that. thank you you need a coloring book or something she's gonna color the ground Get, yeah, get some paper, a book. <laughs> See, it's so much nicer when he's here. Because then when Elise has a meltdown that she needs colors and she needs somebody to draw her a dragon, her daddy's here. Yay! <laughs> Last week was, whoo, that was fun. Okay, so now I have, oops, oops, I have silver. I probably should have did something that stood out a little bit more. I did silver and white. And now we're going to finish off with the red. Um, so, okay. I saw where y'all said to do the green pearl for the HTV design. But what about Mary Mary on the towel? What color should we do that? So now I'm cutting the white and loading oops, the red. That's right under the red. Chris, close my door, please. Um, the, the first Mary is under, I do have metallic. I'm scared of metallic though. I bought these from Sewing Machine Plus and I didn't even open these. This is a gold metallic, like very gold. I have a red metallic and a silver metallic. Um, I was thinking the Mary that's right under the red bow could do that one green so it's alternating red then green and then try to stop and stop the machine and do the second Mary to be red so that they're two different colors um green then red would have been cute yeah I think I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna uh stop the machine and change the thread <laughs> I think I could I think I could do it if I'm watching it so while it's doing the red I am going to go cut my vinyl so I need, okay, we're gonna go with the pearl, the pearly green. And I need six inches by four and a half inches. So, sorry, big light. That's not, that doesn't look good. Too many lights. Let's do that. Okay, um, this is how I like to stand at my cutting mat facing this way. So the piece I have is five and a half, and I need a four and a half. That's good, so I could go six this way. What I said? Six. I have to write it down because it never fails. I go look at my computer, and then I'll come to my cut mat, and I'm like, okay, six by four and a half, six by four and a half, six by four. What number? <laughs> so I have, I have like note, note uh, pads, like long skinny ones. That's like, that's all they're filled with is um is numbers of dimensions to cut vinyl because i like to cut it with as little over as possible so that i'm not wasting and then i keep all my scraps and i use them for other projects um when like if I just like today I needed a little piece of red and I already had a little tiny piece of red cut that fit, ended up fitting perfect for that bow if I would have thrown that away you know then I would have had to cut again for my big rolls so I try not to go cut for my big rolls that are on my cabinet um 
behind y'all. <laughs> y'all are standing right here with me. Uh, but, um, and keep all the scraps so that I don't have to use those big, only use those big rolls when I have big projects, like big shirts, and I need to fill up the whole thing. So the red was five and a half by one and a half. I have this strip. Yay, it's six. And it's by two, so I'm just going to use this. This is already, already big enough. Okay, so now we have the mat. So this is not the mat that came with the machine. I bought these mats um, on Amazon Prime Day. There were like three of them for um, like eight or nine bucks. They're, they're really cheap and they work there. They're this brand, if you could see it. I'll put a link in the description box below when the live's over and I do my job like I was supposed to do before the live started. But, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my mat just like I had it set up in the Silhouette Studio software. I'm going to put this green square in the upper left corner and this red rectangle in the upper right corner so that it's going to be just like what I have it set up in the software. So I take off my, my clear piece. I hope this is sticky enough. Okay, and then I make sure I have it in the right orientation. I had this as being six inches wide. You're going to put the glossy pretty side down. You want to cut, because remember you cut in a mirror image. So the glossy pretty side, only when you're doing HTV, you want the glossy pretty side down, or the glittery side down when you're doing glitter vinyl. Okay, so I'm putting this down, and then I'll show y'all. This was a little bit too. This was a little too wide. I gotta cut it. I strip off. Okay, so I'm putting my red down. So now it's stuck to the mat just like I set it up on the machine and the pretty glossy side is down or the glittery side is down and your plain smooth side is up. That's what you want to do whenever you're doing HTV. If you're doing sticky vinyl for cups, that's different. That one you're going to put the pretty glossy side up and you're not going to mirror image your your design on the software. You're going to keep it as it is. So HTV, flip it, put it down. Okay, now we, let's give you a different view now. Push you by the embroidery machine and show you the silhouette. That's my silhouette machine here. Okay, and my heat press. So my silhouette machine is on, so I'm just gonna roll it up. And I'm going to, they have these white lines right here. When I put the mat on, I put the edge of the mat right on that white line there. And I get that lined up before I press the feed button. So I line that up, I push it with both hands so that it's nice and flush against all these little roller bars here. And then I press this. And so I know it, it went in smoothly. If it doesn't go in smoothly, Take it out and do it again until you know so that you know it's not in crooked because if it's in crooked it's going to cut crooked and you might miss some of your space of where you put your vinyl. So once we have that then we need to, I don't know why it's blurry now, it looks blurry on my computer like my service is not good but I moved my Wi-Fi up here. <laughs> My Wi-Fi boxes, <laughs> my modem and my router is up here. So sorry if it is blurry. It must I must have messed something up when I close out the screen to turn off my notifications on my phone. So I apologize if the quality is not that good. Um, let me go to silhouette. Okay, so now we're in silhouette. We are, you 
you know, we have our green on this side, our red on this side. We have everything how we want it. It's, it's reversed. It's a mirror image. So now I'm going to go to send. And now we need to tell it what we have. So this side is actually a smooth pearl vinyl, and this side is a glitter vinyl. So I, I need to have different cut settings for these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cookie one, and right here I'm going to click no cut. So now it's only set up to cut the green pearl, and I'm going to have heat transfer smooth selected, and I have an auto blade, and it automatically puts it at two. I personally prefer it to be at three, so I'm going to click this until it moves over to three. Then my machine is ready, and so I'm just gonna hit send. And now it's gonna ask me, do I wanna send it mirrored or as is? And I've already mirrored it, so I'm gonna hit send as is. So, now it is changing the blade to three, and it's gonna cut everything that was green. That's gonna happen. Oops. So, now I'm done with all the red on my design. Instead of switching, I got one trick here for you. Instead of switching green and then switching red again, I'm going to use, no, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna switch back. It's, it's gonna be too hard to see on my screen. I was gonna try and stitch fast forward the stitching until it began the second Mary, but it's going to be too hard to tell. So I'm going to cut the red. This is where like, I could go back and fix it in a brilliance and then load it again, but let's play around with seeing if, how good I can, I can do this just on the machine. So I'm going to put the green and I'm just going to watch it. Worst case, if I don't stop it in time, we'll just let both of them be green. Okay, so I am done cutting the green. I'm gonna leave the mat on. I'm gonna go back to silhouette. Now I'm going to click the official tester, hit no cut. Click the cookie, hit cut. Now I'm going to change the material to glitter heat transfer vinyl. Glitter. Glitter. There we go. It has the automatic settings there. I personally like it to be one more. So it has it set for a blade of three. I'm going to move it over to four. Okay. And then everything's ready. And I'm going to hit send. And I'm going to send as is. Okay. So now it's changing the blade to four and it's going to go over here and cut the cookie and the holly berry. So. And also when you're using the machine, make sure you pull it away from the wall here because this mat is going to slide through um, to the, the back so it's going to hit that wall. So make sure however you have your machine set up that you have it um, where the mat can go back and forth freely. Okay, so we're on the E of Mary. <laughs> right. Time for a sip. All right, cutting is complete. This is a lot quicker. <laughs> so I'm going to take my mat out. And the cutting is done. And sometimes what I do is before I unload it, which I should have done, I go and I look and I make sure it really did cut. Because sometimes I mess up and I don't put the vinyl right where it belongs. And it's like cut on the mat and not on the vinyl. So the design won't be right. But I can see it's all right just by looking at it. So I'm going to peel these off. I'm going to 
stay right here because my Mary is almost done. We're on the R. See, you see when it jumps? That's when I know when it when it's when it does those last couple stitches of that Y, I'm gonna pause the machine. So here we are. We're almost there. Doing the last stitch. Going through the Y. <laughs> and bump, bump, pause. Ha! How you like that? Now I'm gonna hit the cut button. Cut. So it cuts the thread. And now I'm gonna change it. I did good. Okay. So I could pull that out. I can cut it there with the presser foot. Now I'll load the red. Just pick up where. Wait, I gotta make sure that's right. Is that right? Okay. Now I have a tail on that green, but I'll cut that later. And now it's gonna stitch the other Mary. Woohoo! That worked out real good. Now we can weed our vinyl. So let's see how I'm gonna show y'all this. We're gonna do it up here. Okay. Mm. Hold on a second. I'm not the best camera person. <laughs> okay, so now we have our vinyl. I'm gonna go ahead and move the ironing board so I have a flat, a nice flat surface. And basically, I'm just gonna pick the corner here and peel it up to separate the vinyl from the clear plastic carrier sheet, right? Now heat transfer vinyl is a lot easier to weed than sticky vinyl. I can pull this, I don't have to worry about it going, folding back and sticking to itself. Um, it is pretty, pretty easy to weed. So we're just pulling it just like we would tear away stabilizer. So I'm just pulling all around. I had some extra down there. I probably should have saved that. And then we're going to need to use a tool to get in all the little pieces that are sticking on there. But I'm not too gentle with this, you know, I'm, I'm yanking it off of there. And then I need to find, I'll find a link to this is my tool. It's from Sizer, um, but it's like just like a little, little hook. You know, you gotta be careful too, because this is a really pointing end. And uh, you gotta make sure the kids don't get it because they will hook themselves with it. I'm gonna turn this iron off because I don't need it anymore. It's getting hot in here with all the heat pressing the iron on. And so I have this extra space here. I'm going to stick all my extras right there. And just depending on your light, you can move the design around and see um, where the cut lines are to make sure you know, you're not yanking it in the, in the area that's supposed to stay. But I just use this little tool to get where all the stuff that's staying or like in the holes of letters. So like here's the O and I can see that O is big so I'm gonna pierce it in the middle and then pull it up. You can see that 
and pull it up. And so you want to make sure you don't have any spare pieces stuck here because when you iron your shirt, those pieces are going to go with it. Or you iron your, um, your oven mitt. Okay. All right, so, and I can turn it over and now it, it is in the right direction. So we see that's how it's supposed to look. And I don't see any stray pieces. I don't see any pieces that I was supposed to pull out that I didn't. Just double check your work. And then I can cut, I'll cut this off the bottom. And I usually like, I'll keep a little sticky piece on the side here to, to do those things. Okay, so now we have a red. The glitter I find is a little easier to weed than the regular. So that just has our little berries and our wording. And I find with the glitter, I don't even need to use this tool. Like everything comes off super easy and I can pick them out with my fingernails if you don't have fingernails but you could just bend bend it and it really like just comes out so now I can see my cookie looks good and then if you want to get an idea of when we do it on the oven mitt I can put this down and I can see that this is gonna fit right about there and I can go look at my computer and you know, look, okay, like where this, where is it that berry's supposed to be to make sure my, you know, make sure your cookie, the wording is straight. That looks about right, something like that. And then you could take these together and then take your mitt and do like this. And so we're gonna have to make sure we press this really well because this is a, this is a quilted, so Make sure we use a good amount of pressure to make sure that this presses nicely and all those those things there. Okay, so we are ready to press that. Again, tags. That about taking tags off. Okay, so let's look at our embroidery design and then we'll press that. Here is our finished embroidery design for the dish towel. And now I'm just gonna cut the jump stitches between the letters a little. Some of them you can't even see. The, red, the green you can't see at all, the red you can, so I'll, cut, I'll snip those. I like it when the jump stitches are on top, the water soluble topper like that, because it's easier to like get the scissors underneath the thread without snagging the um, the towel or the fabric underneath. Okay, so that's that and then we got these crazy jump stitches between the holly berries. Now we're gonna cut. You see, they come out pretty easy. They're not as simple as a jump stitch, but they're not bad at all. To me, this is easier than going an enthusiast and, and um, figuring out which points are the, the basting points and which points are not. That's more tedious than this. Elise is very much enjoying her Polly Pocket this evening. That's it for all the jump stitches. 
And now I could take my masking tape and my water soluble topper and just tear it away. And it's, it's in our applique area. So we just scratch it and pull it out. That's what I do. And all these little tiny pieces you don't have to worry about getting in there and pulling them out because you can just, I just get the big giant ones. Um, you can spray that with some water. I don't want to scratch here too much because of my HTV. I'm going to cut and then pull. Ooh, I love that glitter. Glitter looks good on everything. just tear it away on the back and it just pops right out. Now I am not one that worries about what the back of towels looks like. I'm more worried about what the front looks like. So I'm not going to go and pick out all the tear away back here. That's just personal preference. Um, if it bothers you, you are more than welcome to do it. It will all come out. So here is I've got glitter pieces everywhere. Here's the back of the design. They had a lot of jump stitches, so you have a lot of these jump bobbin. I you can cut them, but don't you know leave about a quarter of an inch from the uh, back so that you don't compromise the stitches on the front. But you can also leave them because it is the back of the towel. Um, sometimes I clean up the backs of towels more than I do, definitely more than I do shirts. I don't clean up the back of shirts much at all because I'm just going to cover them in tender touch. But like I said, if this bothers you, you can cut it and clean it up. Just don't cut it too close. I'm going to stop there. Um, like I said, you could tear out this tear away if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it. I think it's fine. And then the front, we have glitter everywhere. Okay. The front has a little bit of water soluble topper still in some nooks and crannies. So I'm going to spray it. Almost have it. There we go. With a little water spray bottle. And get that out. And also, if your placement stitches are still there, they will come out with water or they will come out with a tied pin, which I'll show you. Um, tie pin. Get the purple marks out. There's one there. That's about it. Okay, so our dish towel is done. So y'all see that. That came out really cute. I like the colors. I'm glad we did Mary Mary in two different colors. I think that came out cute. I think the fabric choice was good. I love the glitter. Very cute. So now let's go press this. 
So let's see, let me give you all a good view of the, um, this is my heat press. I have been meaning to get some good magnets so that I can keep one Teflon sheet like always covering the top. I, I don't, I haven't done it yet. But I, I have a Teflon sheet at the bottom and the top because I ironed something once on the, the base of this and it's stuck to it. So I find this is, it's got some residue on it. So I just keep a Teflon sheet on there too, just to be safe. So you want, let me get this out of here. You oh, want. Oh, the light blue is not working anymore. Oh, you must have left the cap off of I it. I need it for my sky. Okay, so I'm just going to start with the does, green. And I'm just eyeballing it, it. Eyeballing it. And if I wanted to, you I could put something, it. because this is a pocket. Oh, there's still a little one. I have, there's still a I little have one. pressing pillows that I made. This is just foam covered in, um, what do you call it, ironing board, heat resistant fabric. I could stick, I don't know if that will make a difference, but I could stick that in there. And now I'm just, because this clear transfer stuff is sticky, you can stick it and see like right where you want it. So like I think that's where I want this. Just eyeball on it. I think that's fine. I really don't think I need the pressing pillow. I don't think it's much different than the, the thing that's on the back here. They do, you know what, I do need it because they have this here and so this part might not get pressed as good. So I will keep it in there. Okay. So, but now you, I have to make sure so I'm going to put that there, I'm going to cover this, I'm going to have to loosen up the clamp on my thing a lot because I have a lot of thickness going on here. And I have it set for 305 and do it for 15 seconds. So that's yeah, nice and pressed, it should get some good pressure there. And I have my, I have my heat press on a very sturdy table. And I put some grip underneath it so it wouldn't scratch the top of my table. But it needs to be on something really sturdy. So that is there. This is hot. And so that, and then we just peel it off. And I make sure that it's sticking to the mitt when I do it. So that's still there. And now I'm just going to eyeball the cookie to go on top of it where I think I want it, like this, and I'm going to press it down so it sticks good, put it in my Teflon sheet, and press it again for, now glitter vinyl I usually increase it to 320, but it's okay, I'm just going to leave it at 305 and do it for 15 seconds, but glitter I do usually increase the temperature to 320 for 15 seconds. Okay, and then I'm going to peel off the red transfer tape. So now it's done, but I'm going to press it one more time. And then sometimes I'll save, like I'll save this piece here. The glitter one's not so much, but this one I'll save for like next time when I have the scraps and I need it somewhere to stick it. Um, I will save that to put scraps on. So take my pressing pad out. And now I have a matching uh, oven mitt to go with my applique towel. So what do y'all think? We accomplished two things in more than two hours. <laughs> this one took a lot more. But this is our final product. We have the applique wreath dish towel. 
with some HTV glitter in there for the ribbon. And then we did some HTV on the oven mitt to go with it. So, y'all like it? What, baby? Could you color the rest of the sky for me? I'm almost done with my video, baby, and then I will color whatever you want. So now I'm gonna turn my heat press off because it's hot. Mommy, this is the color that I want <laughs> you to color it. Okay. All right, put it on the floor for me and I will color it for you when I'm done, okay? Well, Actually, I'll put it on your table so put, you could just stay whoop. on your table and Okay, see I'll how color it while I'm answering doing. questions. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let me turn my computer back on. Hello, hello. Sorry, I take forever to show how to do things because I talk too much. I'll put the cap on this. I'll get blue marker on the white desk. Oh, battery's going dead. Plug in the phone, Carly. Plug in the phone. I got me an extra long cord. Okay. All right, let me go over to YouTube. I'm so sorry. It still looks like really blurry on the... Um, dog keeps going in and out the room opening the door <laughs> uh i'm so sorry that it looks you know clear as day on my phone as i'm filming but i'm looking at the computer and it's blurry so i'm sorry i'll take some good pictures of this and um i will post them on the blog and in the facebook group and on instagram i need to be better about all those things but um okay let me go up and look. Okay, Monica wants to know if you have used wash away stabilizer on a towel yet. No, I haven't. I actually got some in the mail today. Um, I use, I've always used tear away, but um, I think wash away should work fine if you want it to be where you don't have any stabilizer, you know, residue on the back. If you don't feel like going and picking all this out uh, with the wash away, it would wash right out. Um, no, I haven't tried it yet, but I did get some in the mail today. I got a bunch of, I ordered a bunch of stuff, came in. It's <laughs> still by the front Mommy. door. <laughs> what, baby? I want water. I'll go ask Daddy, sweetheart. But I can't find him. Uh, he might be on the back porch. Let's go see. Where's the back porch? You know where the back porch is, by the back door. Let's go see. Come here. go with me. No, I can't. Just go by the back door. It's right there. Okay. So, um, sorry. Uh, we were talking about wash away. It should work. Um, so, all right. Yes, okay. I'm so sorry. Very much a slacker today. We went in the car like all day long across the lake and we went it was really fun we went in for the first time ever because i mean we live down in the swamp like we're way at the bottom of the country <laughs> um and bottom of the state and uh for the first time ever we went you know about an hour hour and a half north of us and where they have woods and you know forests and stuff and we went to a christmas tree farm and we cut down our own christmas tree which the girls partly liked and partly didn't like <laughs> so that was fun but we were in the car all day today and I didn't get home until right before the last started so I didn't have all my my ducks in a row uh like I usually do but I promise you as soon as this video is over I am going to link everything for you in the description box also if you go to carlybell.com and at the top of the screen they have sip and stitch click that I have links to I think everything I used tonight I think I missed a few things that I need to go back and add but um, everything will be on there. And then slowly but surely, I am making a blog post for every project that we do. Um, and the blog post has a lot more details about what we did, pictures, links to all the projects, and then I'll have a link to the actual video that we're doing now and, um, and everything. So each, each project will get its own blog post eventually. <laughs> So yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna put all that for you. Um, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Any other questions? Okay. 
um, yeah, the, the Facebook group. Um, if you're not already a member, please join us. I will put, I think I saw Carol earlier added a link to the Facebook group. Um, I'll put a link in the box down below. Um, and uh, they have a few questions, if you could please answer the questions. Um, and then we'll accept you into the group and then go check out the unit section right away. <laughs> That's the best part. Let's see. Okay, so real quickly, let me put, I'll put a link to the Facebook group and I'll put a link to the Creative Fabrica. Um, let me go here. All right. Where are my thingamabobs? Okay, I got the Facebook group link here. Copy, paste. Wendy, what are you doing, girl? Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. That's so sweet of you. Um, yes, I will use that for, to buy some Black Fridays. I got some things in my cart at Embroidery Boutique I need to get. <laughs> but thank you so much. That is so sweet of you. Um, okay, so that was the link to the Facebook group. Okay, and then where is my link for Creative Fabrica? Come on, computer. My computer's even being slow. So, something I bought today that might Mommy, does water give you help. energy? My computer's frozen. Mommy, does water give um, you energy? Does water give me energy? Yes, I think it does. You want to come sit with me? Now so, I have more energy. I think I need to up my internet, but I, um, wait, 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 we need a notebook. I want to color. Okay, I know, but you can't color on mommy's desk because that marker will go straight through that paper on my thing. Let me find. We need a mat or a notebook. Go find. A, um, go get look. Get the Mickey Mouse notebook, and then we could put that underneath it. Okay. Um. Uh, Black Friday sale today. I bought the Google Mesh Wi-Fi system. I have to pick it up tomorrow from Best Buy, but I think. I also need to like increase my internet package um, so that it works better. Cause it is not working right now. It's like, nope, I don't like you. I'm not going to Mommy, how about I could do it on the back of the side that I That's color? That's perfect. Now you can color. Just don't get blue marker on mommy's desk. Okie dokie, Smokey. Okie dokie, Smokey. Thank you. Right. What does okie dokie smoke? I mean? have no idea. It's just something I say. I've always said. Aw, thank you, Kimberly. That is so sweet of y'all. I don't what have did, to do that. What did they say? They said thank you, and they gave me a little bit of money. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. She's going to ask for it. <laughs> okay. Aunt money. No. <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um. So thank y'all very much. Y'all don't have to do that. Um, where is my link for Creative Fabrica, people? Come on. I am trying to find it. Still can't find it. I'm working on it. Da -da -da, I found it. Okay. Copy. Copy. Where are we here? Link. Okay. That is my affiliate link to Creative Fabrica's Black Friday sale. I think it is good till Monday. Where are you going? I need more energy. Oh, you need more energy. Okay. There you go. There's your energy. <laughs> um, and I will put all of that in the description box. Probably after she goes to sleep. <laughs> so, um, but it was so nice of y'all to join me tonight. I hope everyone had a fun Black Friday and y'all got some good deals. 
Uh, remember to go join the Facebook group and check out the unit section for all of the embroidery uh, Black Friday deals that I found at all of our favorite spots um, that we buy designs from. I couldn't find really any deals on machines. I know Sewing Machines Plus has a few um, deals, I think, like on accessories and maybe hoops and thread. I'll try and remember to post those in the group. I think they're good through Cyber Monday as well. So, um, but that's it. I hope y'all enjoyed tonight's project. Um, Brenda, I hope you enjoyed our HTV tutorial and silhouette. <laughs> and if y'all want to see more silhouette tutorials, please let me know um, down in the comments below. Um, and if you have any specific projects, embroidery projects, um, that y'all are wanting to tackle and want us to do for a sip and stitch. Also, please leave those recommendations down in the comments below. Um, please visit my website, carlybell.com, for more information about sip and stitch. We have a homepage there. I try and do a blog post for every project we do. Um, and other places you can find me. A little bit not not as much as I should be but I'm on Instagram at Carly Bell I'm on Pinterest at Carly Bell and then y'all see me on Facebook too and the Facebook group is where I'm at the most so um, thank you all for coming tonight and joining me in my craft room and I hope everyone has a great rest of their holiday weekend and y'all tell me all the good stuff y'all find for Black Friday and pass, pass it on and, and uh, <laughs> so I could check it out too <laughs> So, oh, yes, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed tonight's project. I'm sorry, I'm like, I take, I talk forever and I'm so long. I try to wrangle it in, but it just keeps coming out. So, um, but thanks for sticking around for all of y'all that did. I really appreciate it. So, oh, okay. So, everyone, tell, say good night, Lucy. Tell everybody good night. Say night night. Night night. Say have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye. See y'all next week. And I'll try Bye. and update. See y'all next week. <laughs> I'll try and update the Sip and Stitch website on Monday, hopefully, on what project we're going to do next Friday so that if you would like to join in and stitch or um, project along with us, you will have all your supplies and um, know what design I'm doing ahead of time um, so you could have it all together. So thank y'all so much. Good night.